Senator from Charleston, Senator Lieber, what purpose do you rise, sir? All for introductory remarks. You are recognized for introductory remarks. Senator from Charleston. Thank you, Mr. President. Wow. Wow. This place is something else. It really is. I'm the senator from Charleston, called in Dorchester County's low country, greatest place on the planet. I love where I come from, and I am so honored to represent them in this, this august chamber with the rest of you here, my colleagues. I want to recognize my wife. <clears throat> wow. <laughs> Michelle, she's... Uh, she just won a seat on the Charleston County School Board, so I want to congratulate her from the Senate floor. It's just an awesome thing. She's a trustee, and um, it looks like I'm going to be on the Corrections Committee, and I was talking to Chairman Martin about that, and he was informing me that um, some inmates are also called trustees, so you can do that whatever you want with that. <laughs> Good luck. My, my daughter is here, my youngest daughter, Kenzie Grace. She's the uh, person on the planet that has the most power over me, for sure. Um, we have two other children, Lucas and Savannah, and they, they couldn't be here today, but uh, I have a big family that supports me. Mom and Dad are watching on TV, I'm sure. I want to talk a little bit about my grandfather today. I'm, I'm wearing his paratrooper pin from World War II. He was a first-generation uh, first gen immigrant from Sweden, uh, where the Vikings come from, and that's well before I can grow this magnificent beard. He left, went back to Europe to fight the Axis powers, and he wore this pin on the parade grounds in France after America won that. So I think he, was, he would be very proud if he was with us still, and recognize that this is probably the second most important place this pin's ever been worn. He was a great man, and it was the reason I became a paratrooper. My brother became a paratrooper. My dad's a Vietnam vet. We've served our country. And I feel like this is just an extension of that service, being elected to this office. You know, our, uh, our founding fathers warned us about factions and even parties. They thought it would tear the fabric of who we are as Americans if we constantly fought one another in, the, in this factional manner. And I come from the House as well, as Senator Elliott and others. And that, that sort of bred that sort of fracture amongst members because they, we did break off into factions. Different caucuses, we called each other liberty or freedom or military, whatever it was. And our founding fathers warned us about that when, in the Federalist Papers, especially. And even President Washington, in his farewell address, he said, the common and continual mischiefs of the spirit of party are sufficient to make it the interest and duty of a wise people to discourage and restrain that. I think there's a lot of wise people in this chamber, in this august body, that take that to heart and want to work together to do what's best for the people of South Carolina. And I'm proud to be a part of that. I'm proud to be a part of this group that's committed to working together to accomplish the common good. You know, our, our president came and addressed us freshmen at orientation and he said, you know, the House floor is like the stock market floor. And the Senate is like a church. And he's right. I mean, I'm looking around. I feel like I'm in a very special place, a cathedral of sorts. But I don't, I don't think that the president meant that this was like a Pentecostal church or something, you know. I don't think there's a drum set. I don't think we're going to be speaking tongues. And I hope we don't handle snakes. And I don't want to try any poison. But I, I appreciate that analogy, that there is certain traditions and expectations of civility and respect for one another that I'm glad to be a part of 
and commit to be a part of that spirit. I wish to affirm that commitment to values that have long defined this historic chamber, respect, collaboration, and the enduring traditions that guide our work. What I know about the Senate is that it has always been a place where differing ideas converge, where debate sharpens solutions, without a, where consensus is forged for the greater good, but none of this is possible without a foundation of mutual respect and conge congeniality. These qualities are not just courtesies, they are essential tools in fulfilling our responsibility to the people of South Carolina. Our traditions remind us that we are part of something greater than ourselves. They call us to rise above partisanship, to honor the process and ensures fairness, and to engage one another with dignity, even in the moments of disagreement. I spoke with my fellow Charleston Senator Senator Tedder last year, and he said, man, you're gonna like it over here. You're gonna like it. You're gonna like how we debate. And he is so right. May we strive to build bridges, strengthen our shared purpose, and preserve the integrity of this esteemed institution, the Senate of the great state of South Carolina. Thank you, Mr. President. Thank you, Senator from Charleston.